Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Re-Engineering the Chess Classic series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and this series of videos is inspired by my latest book Re-Engineering the Chess Classics written together with Steve Giddens, my childhood coach. And that's a book that focuses on classic games, some very well known, some less well known, and finding amazing new things about them with engines, using all the techniques that I described in the Silicon Road to Chess Improvement. And this video series does exactly the same, um, but what it does, it allows me to indulge my passion for uh, obsession even with a couple of those classic players. And uh, actually this game unites both of them because this is a game between Sigbert Tarash and David Janowski at Vienna 1898. Now a little bit of uh, chess history, uh, Vienna 1898 was um uh, an amazingly strong tournament. Uh, all of the chess stars were there apart from Emmanuel Lasker. And uh, it was a triumph for Sigbert Tarash and uh, um, uh, Harry Nelson Pillsbury, who came out top with 27 and a half points. Um, Tarash later winning the playoff, two and a half to one and a half. And uh, well, Fred Reinfeld wrote uh, in his collection of uh, Tarash's best games that uh, even a generation later, um, masters were writing in awe about uh, Tarash's level of play at Vienna and indeed it was extremely good. Uh, but that could also be said for David Janowski who played some quite extraordinary games. Um, Janowski beat Tarash as white um, and uh, ended up in third place on 25 and a half points, two points behind uh, Tarash and Pillsbury. Um, but if this game had gone differently, and it could well have done, um, then, uh, well, the whole tournament could have been different. Um, you may be looking at this opening and saying, hey, wait a minute, you're talking about a game played in 1898, and doesn't that look like the incredibly modern opening, the Sveshnikov? You are absolutely right. Um, I've mentioned before that David Janowski was incredibly inventive, really, uh, you know, way ahead of his time in terms of uh, openings. Uh, seen a couple of examples already, we're going to see many more uh, in the subsequent videos. But indeed, the, um, the Sveshnikov was first played uh, basically by David Janowski in a high-level game anyway in 1898. There was one game earlier of uh, Henry Bird, I think 1881, but yeah, played against quite a weak opponent, so it never really got going. This is real typical Sveshnikov stuff, and it all happened in 1898. Let's have a look how it all came about. So we start off with e4, c5, knight c3, e6, knight f3, knight c6, d4, takes, takes, and knight f6. And um, Janowski didn't exclusively play the Sicilian. Um, I think um, uh, his main opening was 1e5. There are about 180, 82 games, I think, uh, of his in the database, and about 32 games um, with the Sicilian. But it was you know, obviously a pretty regular guest and uh, actually you know considering the positions that he got from uh, from the opening he might well have played it more you would have thought because he always got excellent positions with uh, with black and in particular the e6 systems um, with a knight on c6 he was pretty keen on those um, and uh, well uh, 1898 uh, he played this opening um, uh, a couple of times at Vienna and uh, knight b5 d6 and now um, against uh, Caro, um, uh, the opening was bishop b3, a6, knight d4, d5, and uh, Janowski had already equalised. Bishop b3 is, of course, not a great move. But Tarash, you know, he's a world-class player. He's going to give you uh, uh, as hard a time as possible. Went in for the most critical line, bishop f4, uh, e5, bishop g5, a6. And we are now, you know, uh, into what, what we know in modern times as the Sveshnikov Sicilian. Um, that was basically, you know, really promoted in uh, the late 1960s and then afterwards by uh, Gennady Timoshenko and uh, Yevgeny Sveshnikov. Actually, maybe even Timoshenko was a little bit earlier than Sveshnikov. So it's a bit of a shame that uh, only Sveshnikov got the honour for it. But um, yeah, I mean, that's really when the opening took off. So here, uh, an interesting moment. Um, Ta Tarash took on F6 which is uh, pretty natural, you know, before the knight is forced back to, um, uh, to a3, then um, um, we just uh, take on f6 and force black to take back with a g-pawn um, because uh, queen f6 allows knight c7 check. Um, in actual fact, that's not the modern move order, um, but we'll see uh, uh, exactly what, uh, what happens later. But after bishop f6, g takes f6 was played, um, and now knight a3. 
And uh, well, if you play um, B5, then um, uh, you're back into the main lines of the Sveshnikov as we know and love it. But here, in actual fact, um, uh, Janowski played the move F5. And this is actually um, an extra possibility that comes from White's move order. So normally the move order that White plays, and uh, to be honest, I'm not sure I was really consciously aware of this um, until I actually looked at this game and tried to work out what's happening. The normal move order is knight a3, b5, and then bishop f6. And the point is queen f6, knight d5 is a little bit risky for black. So black ends up taking with the uh, g pawn on, uh, on f6, gives black this possibility of f5, also allows black to develop the bishop to the long diagonal you know just really speeds up black's development at the cost of uh, of a weakened pawn structure um, but that is the usual move order so with Tarash taking on f6 um, a move early it also gives uh, black the possibility of playing f5 which is what um, Janowski did and funnily enough the engines uh, consider this to be slightly the better move in this position than b5 it's Leela's favorite move only with about you know 0.03 difference and uh, well for a stockfish b5 and f5 they're both 0.00, .00 but f5 comes out on top um, yeah, I mean, um, uh, I think the point is simply that, you know, f5 is really putting pressure on white's position. You're just threatening very, very quickly to take on e4, clear stuff away and play d5 eventually. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a very thematic move. Um, just um, uh, to give um, a little bit of uh, an indication that um, knight a3 actually occurred in, um, in Janowski's uh, um, tournament practice as well. A uh, game Leondart um, against Janowski, Ostend 1906. You see, who was still playing it then. Um, Janowski played the interesting move knight d4. Didn't turn out amazingly well for him, but uh, you know, it was quite uh, quite interesting. The game uh, Selman Bird, 1883, actually it was, carried on um, bishop e6, which has been played a reasonable amount at uh, at master level. And uh, yeah, after knight d5, bishop d5, White took on f6 now then got hit with queen a5 check into mezzo and bishop takes e4 and uh, you know uh, black was just a pawn up basically so uh, never really developed into a proper game um, and also Janowski also played the move bishop e7 and uh, this is a game Didier against Janowski Monte Carlo 1901 uh, takes takes knight c4 and then uh, knight d4 again you know Janowski was obviously pretty keen on this idea of uh, of um, um, of playing knight d4 and actually uh, in the game uh, Kola against Janowski uh, New York 1899 then uh, Janowski played bishop e7 so he didn't quite get those ideas with uh, with b5 somehow actually he always seemed to try and avoid b5 but you can see that uh, you know this wasn't just a one-off flash in the pan it was really something that he played a number of times and uh, and you know for the era knew pretty well but anyway bishop f6 gf6 knight a3 f5 and now um uh yeah tarash had to find something and you know tarash as well played this very thematically i mean this turns out quite well for black but uh you can definitely recognize all the moves that tarash played as very normal and natural moves in the sveshnikov um the engines um actually want to play the move bishop c4 that's basically uh um you know the move they want to play and now we get a very sharp line queen g5 bishop g5 queen g2 takes takes queen h3 takes takes knight c4 and now bishop f5 takes and takes and uh, well you know the um, uh, the engines consider this to be approximately equal the, the big points after queen e2 you go rook d8 stop the king from casting queen side so you keep the white king in the center and after queen a6 queen f3 rook g1 bishop uh, h6 it's pretty crazy but uh, the engines feel that uh, that the you know the game is uh, is balanced there um, that was the main reaction of the engines. Um, uh, Dragon also played uh, e takes f5 once, which is quite positional. Bishop f5, knight d5, bishop g7, c3, castles knight c4. And um, yeah, um, after actually after b5, knight c3, you've basically got a pretty normal um, uh, Sveshnikov. Instead of white having played knight c2 to e3, he's gone knight c4 to e3, but it's, you know, it's sort of come to the same. So, um, yeah, you know, all, um, all pretty interesting there. Um, but what uh, Tarash did was play the move Queen H5. And this is a very normal, natural um, move for White and Sveshnikov. And, uh, well, his idea really is to, uh, to come with Bishop C4 and attack the pawn on F7. You know, really, uh, I mean, Tarash is really fighting for those light squares. And, uh, well, 
Dianowski's reaction is absolutely perfect. B5. There we are. In we go. And actually, the engines consider black to be better after this move. It's a really typical um, uh, Sveshnikov move. You know, B5 stops a knight coming to C4, stops a bishop coming to C4, and also threatens B4 as well. And Tarash's reaction is incredible because, uh, you know, again, completely ahead of its time. Because, you know, I was thinking, well, maybe we should go knight D5. But the engines are not at all impressed. Fe, bishop E6. You go c3, uh, they want to go b4, open stuff up, and uh, you know they already consider black to be clearly better in this position. Um, so uh, Tarash plays the uh, the move that the engines consider best, and it's such a brave move. Knight takes b5. There are many lines with these sacrifices on b5 where um, you know you're, you're basically trying to prove that um, uh, white's going to get plenty of pawns. And um, you know, going to be very hard for black to uh, to get free, and white's attacking all the light squares. Um, but I mean, you know, for Tarash to come up with this, um, you know, just in 1898, first game, basically anything like this has really ever been seen um, in a critical game against one of his major rivals. I mean, it's it's really showing the level these guys are playing at. So there's a, a big decision here, and I um, um, hadn't quite cottoned on to what was happening because uh, I made the engines analyze bishop d7, which seemed more natural to me. You know, block the uh, um, uh, the pin, cover f5. You know, you're threatening knight d4. Surely that's better than bishop b7, which is what Yanovsky played. But actually, there's this very unpleasant move, bishop c4. And um, well, the key point is after queen f6, I'm going knight d5, and you'll see the difference in the game. Here, black has to go back to d8, and well, white plays e takes f5, and uh, play continues. But you know what? It's going to castle queenside play f4. It's going to be quite dangerous. So um, what Yunoski did was absolutely correct. He played bishop b7, um, and now after bishop c4 from uh, from uh, Tarash. I mean, this is really concrete, right? I mean, uh, you know, Tarash is really trying to. Uh, um, you know, to uh, to refute the uh, the black system. I mean, really, you know, taking the tactics to the maximum. Here, Janowski, uh, you know, again, probably had to think, you know, quite hard. How am I going to deal with uh, these threats? You know, am I going to uh, to just try and play passively or whatever? He worked out correctly that the the key thing was to give back material. So, going to exchange off queens, and then you're going to give white the opportunity to get the exchange black. Black's going to have two uh, pieces for the um, uh, for the rook. But white's got a, a nice mass of queenside pawns. We see a lot of positions like this, you know, who is better and why. Um, well, in actual fact, the engines consider black to be virtually winning in this position. And uh, and it's a, somehow it's a real shame what happens now because, um, you know, um, yeah, somehow Janowski just seems to, I mean, I'd almost say lose interest in the game somehow. I mean, maybe the uh, this had cost him a lot of effort in the opening and he was getting tired or whatever. But uh, a lot of the moves that he plays now, you know, are really, um, uh, yeah, just very, yeah, very tame, really. You know, whereas and he's such a dynamic player, such an attacking player. I don't understand why he didn't just put this away, actually. Because um, after knight c7 check here, um, I mean, there's only one natural move here. It's king d7, right? I mean, uh, you know, for some reason, um, Janowski played king d8. Why? You know, why would you do this somehow? It's very, very strange. Um, you know, after king d7, you know, white takes on g6. And now one important point, which, you know, is missable in actual fact, it's not f takes g6, like actually Janowski played in the game, but h takes g6, uh, knight a8, bishop a8. And uh, the key point in this one is that if you go um, bishop takes f7 here, then black goes knight d4, and this is really, really strong. I mean, we're threatening knight c2, we're threatening bishop e4 as well. So if you go castle queenside, I go bishop check, bishop takes e4. I'm hitting c2 and g2. I mean, this is just killing, basically. You know, I could even uh, play a rook to c8 to uh, to carry on. So this is just completely winning. So you can't take on f7. So white has to go bishop d5, you know, basically, uh, you know, pin this bishop, you know, block uh, something but then you know black just you can do several things here I mean can go bishop h6 here just to uh, stop white from castling c3 bishop e4 fe and you know the key point is about doing this that um, you know when you go bishop e4 um, I can play a move like king e6 and you know I'm just going to get in d5 I'm going to get in f5 you know having a double death pawn 
taking on e4 and then you still got f5 and e4 a big central preponderance you know that's a really strong way of playing easy to miss i do have to say you know because just playing through it quickly it didn't really occur to me but um uh, or you know rather i was sort of thinking oh you know why 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 is that actually but um yeah you know you just spend a little bit of time and then you realize how strong it is and that you know this is virtually winning for black i think what, what Janowski played was King D8, and you just think, why? I mean, he must have been afraid of some check somewhere or, or miss something, but I don't know, it feels like just careless, really, you know, to uh, to do this. So Queen G6, and now, yeah, Janowski didn't spot this idea of uh, of allowing Bishop takes F7 and played Fg. I can understand that. Knight A8, Bishop A8. And Tarash played the move Bishop D5, which is, you know, pretty natural here. And now, um, what do you want to do here? Um, well, um, the engines were um, were quite keen on always on playing bishop h6. You know, stop white from castling uh, um, queen side. Stop the king from from moving forward um, towards the um, uh, the queen side pawns. And after h4, king d7, c3. You know, just stop the knight from coming into d4. Now that the uh, the bishop's protected, f e takes king e6. You know we're um uh well you know black's got black's well placed here you know everything's logical uh, we've got uh, you know the rook coming to b8 maybe um you know the knight will be able to move away if necessary play d5 you know black's doing pretty well here you know the engine games were ending in draws here but it was going you know pretty well really um yeah um Janowski played king c7 which feels a little bit slow but here tarash made a big mistake um you know he should really be trying to you know keep it tight together but he played b4 and this gave Janowski a huge chance because uh, in this position uh, Janowski could have played bishop h6 somehow he was a bit blind to, to this move he never wanted to play it um, but the idea of bishop h6 is that we're protecting the bishop on a8 so we're threatening knight b4 and after c3 now then black just plays f takes e4 and the big problem for white is that bishop e4 allows knight b4 uh, bishop a8 knight c2 king d1 Knight takes a1, c, you know, the king uh, can't go to d2. And uh, yeah, bishop b4, rook b8, you know, obviously. Um, or black's just completely winning here. So after f takes e4, you can't take back on e4. But uh, yeah, maybe you play something like king d1, but then bishop b7, rook f8, knight e7. You know, it's just clearly just completely winning for black. So b4, you know, again, I mean, I'm sure that Tarash must have been getting short of time, must have been getting tired. He was the sort of guy who really gave massive effort, tried to discover the logic behind positions. And, uh, you know, this was a big mistake. But yeah, Janowski, I don't know. Uh, I'm not quite sure whether there are any contemporary accounts of uh, of how he played or, or whatever, but, um, you know, in this game. But uh, he played this move, bishop e7, which is, uh, you know, very very tame Tarish played c3 and now now he's okay you know um and yeah Tar Janowski played the move bishop g5 so okay now you're putting the uh the bishop on this diagonal but you, you could have put it in in one move you know with bishop h6 h4 bishop f6 h5 and uh you know although the engine still think that black's sort of uh you know okay holding it's pretty clear that Janowski's just completely lost the thread and uh well Tarash just starts you know um, putting it all together, grinding the position, you know, consolidating everything. You know, he knows exactly what he wants to do, and uh, and yeah, Janowski is just not, yeah, somehow mentally not 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 there anymore. You get the feeling. Um, so after f3, he plays knight e7, um, takes takes, king d2, d5, and just a4. Um, you know. If you're going to take twice on e4 now, I mean, you've just got double pawns, awful. And White's then got three connected past pawns. And, uh, you know, you're looking at the pieces. This bishop is passive. This knight is passive. How did this all happen? You know, how did we go from that beautiful position to this? It's uh, a real shame as well, because, you know, if, if this, uh, if this, if Janowski had won this in, in good style, it would have been the greatest first Sveshnikov game ever played in 1898, you know, by, uh, by, uh, by this, you know, completely... Uh, um, uh, by this complete genius, David Janowski, and instead it's you know it turns out to be a rather disappointing loss here. But you know, I mean, uh, Tarash plays it very very well, um, very safe. You know, uh, king close to the pawns. Uh, Janowski, Lord knows what he's doing there. I mean, f4 is never going to work. I mean, g4, something. You know, you've got to open open stuff up here. But uh, 
Rook d1, d4, c4, and uh, well, it's just completely over really now. Um, you know, there's just too much. There's just too much coming in there. A7, rook a6, um, rook d a1, h6. Very nice uh, from Tarash here. You know, putting a pawn, um, an alpha zero pawn. You know, on h6, close to the h7 pawn. Funnily enough, in uh, Tarash's The Game of Chess, which is his manual for uh, beginners. He um, he, you know, relates his disagreement with um, with uh, with Steinitz. You know, says that Steinitz always said this pawn could get um, uh, weak, you know, and uh, and captured. And Taras saying, yeah, but this pawn could be really, really strong as an attacking force in the middle game and also in the end game, which is you know, alpha zero to perfection. And um, uh, yeah, and uh, well, that's what he does in this game, and he's absolutely right. And um, yeah, you know, he um, he plays around quite a bit, which feels quite enginey, uh, to to be honest. And then uh, again, beautiful strategy. I mean, really, for for strategy, Tash was amazing. Um, he just opens up the uh, the king side, you know, and just uh, starts um, uh, creating holes on the uh, on the other side there, and eventually. Uh, Janowski can't cope anymore. He can't take it anymore. Gives away a piece, and uh, it's just a complete win for uh, for White there. So yeah, you know, a really from a Janowski fan point of view, really disappointing game. Uh, but I'm also a Tarash fan as well. Uh, getting bigger and bigger by the day, I have to say. And uh, yeah, you know, that was an incredible game from him as well. Um, yeah, I mean, simply, you know, that um, that a player like Janowski in such a crucial game against his main rival, really important tournament, you're really fighting for first place, that he played an opening like this, you know, and then afterwards, you know, handled it in a real, really modern, typical fashion against, you know, play that uh, from Tarash also feels very modern indeed. And, uh, you know, was certainly not backing away, just really going for it. And, uh, you know, very well calculated. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you have, you know, the, the mercurial side of, uh, of Janowski, unfortunately, comes to the fore. And instead of just finishing this off, this game, you know, dynamically, like you would expect him to, yeah, suddenly he starts playing very tamely. And, um, you know, it all goes wrong. And, you know, there Tarash is in his element, just, uh, you know, squeezing the life out of the opponent's position. And, uh, you know, and... Uh, and winning a you know a very controlled end game in the end, but um, yeah, quite incredible, quite incredible. So if anyone ever tells you you know uh, that uh, Sveshnikov and Timoshenko invented the Sveshnikov system, don't believe them. It was first Henry Bird and then really David Janowski who uh, who uh, who showed the power of this uh, system. That you know, pawn structure wasn't important. It was all about dynamics, open lines, and uh, you know. Uh, counterattacks against the uh, against the white center so there we are hope you enjoyed that um, if you enjoyed the video why not give a like subscribe to the channel if you're a Janowski fan do subscribe to the channel because I've got plenty more planned um, do take a look at my new book re-engineering the chess classics which um, I really think is a is a you know a really wonderful book and uh, full of uh, stuff that uh, you know personally I wish I, I'd, I'd had when I was uh, when I was young I think it would have uh, made me improve so much so you know do don't miss out on this chance do take a look at the book and otherwise you know thanks very much for watching thanks for being part of this channel and hope to see you at the next video thanks for watching